I was going through the book of Psalms last week, and uh, I found a lot of scripture that talked about praise and thanksgiving. So I thought I'd write a sermon on praise and thanksgiving out of the book of Psalms, just using Psalms as scripture. So Psalms are a collection of praises and prayers which come together over a long period in Israel's history. Uh, stretching out <coughs> from David's time until the exile of Babylon. So there's uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years through different people that wrote the book of Psalms. So a good number of Psalms were first of all personal prayers. A lot of Psalms that were written were personal prayers of people that they brought up to the Lord. Some of them were just personal praises. They just wanted to praise God and write down their praise to the Lord. But many were written for public worship. So I want to go, and I call this sermon, Why We Worship God. It's a good Sunday school question. Why do we think we worship God? And then everybody here would have their own answer. Amen? Because He's good to us. Because He loves us. You know, and all the different things we can think of. First of all, I want to just say we worship God because of who He is. Just simply because of who He is. He is the creator of life. Amen? Amen. He's the great and powerful King whose authority is worldwide in scope. He is the authority in every nation, every country, every town, every city, every province, and the entire world. He is the King of kings and the Lord of the lords, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Great I Am, the I Am of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the Lord Jesus Christ that walks in the land of the living. That's what the Bible says. And He's here amongst us this morning. For two or three gathered by name, there shall He be in the midst of Him. Amen? Amen. I can feel his presence after the first worship song. Could you? Amen. And we desperately need God's presence in our lives. You know why? Because it contradicts our presence. And it overrides who we are. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we need that. Hallelujah. So, God brings forth his own purposes. And nothing can withstand them. He brings forth his own purposes in the world, and he brings his own forth own purposes in your life, and nothing can withstand them. It doesn't matter if we agree with them or not, it's God's purposes. Psalms 24. You want, if you want to write these down, there's 17 psalms in this scripture, so if you're writing them down, get a big piece of paper. <laughs> Amen. And you can go home and study them again and Go over them for your own personal benefit. Amen. So lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lift up. Psalms 24, 7 to 10. You everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I said, Lord, what are you talking about? What do you mean when you say lift up your heads, O ye gates? I said hands, but it's heads. And be ye lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. I believe he's talking about cities and provinces and towns and countries and nations to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ in the midst of them. Amen. And that's what we desperately need in this world. If the nations of the world would lift up Christ more instead of themselves, we wouldn't have all these problems. Amen. It says, who is this King of Glory? How many know Third Day? The group Third Day. Says, who is this King of Glory that consumes me with His might? It's a great song. It's about a song that Jesus is consumed by grabbing a holy you and bringing you into His kingdom. Who is this King of Glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. And He repeats the same in verse, in verse 9 and 10, it repeats this over again. So this is a great question. This is this question that the Lord is really asking because he's asked it twice in a row. He says, you need to lift up 
the Lord in your province. So when we as people, we can't keep silent about Jesus Christ. How can you be silent about the Lord? About the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who's given you salvation, who's changed your life. Amen? Who's given you hope, everlasting hope. Remember that scripture? Twinkling of an eye, the dead of Christ shall rise. Those that remain shall be caught up and be of the Lord forever. Blink your eyes. That's our glorious hope. One day he's coming to get us. And we're not going to tell our friends. We want them to stay behind. So we have to lift up the king of glory in our town. Tell people about Jesus. Psalms 29, 1 to 2 says, He tells us as a people to invite him into our personal life. And this is what it says. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord glory. Do his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. What the Lord is telling us to do is to invite him into our personal life and to worship him. To give him praise. To give him glory. That is do his name. That means to tell people about the glory and the greatness of God. Amen? And spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? The gospel is not a gloomy gospel. The gospel is a joyful gospel. It's a gospel of hope. Amen? Amen? Not no pun intended, but it's a gospel of hope. That's what it is. Let's make it the gospel of hope. Amen? Where people can hear the word of God, believe the word of God, and get changed by the power of the word of God. Amen? Amen. He's the ruler of all the earth. That's why we need to worship him. Psalm 47, 7 says, For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. He is the ruler of all the people of all the earth. Whether they want to believe it or not, he's the ruler of every person in this entire world. Well, why is there so much trouble in the world then? It's called rebellion. It's called unbelief. And it's called God will not impose himself upon people's will. He'll let them do what they please until they call out, God help me. How many here called that out to the Lord? God help me. And did he help you? Yes, he helps you, amen? Because that's a statement of belief. I do believe in God. I do believe he's going to help me. I don't believe the government is going to help me. Although they do, and they're there for you sometimes, but it's not the help that's going to sustain you. It's just a, a facade help. It's there at the moment. God is your everlasting help. He's eternal help. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms 47, 8, 9, that God reigneth over all the earth, over all the heathen. God stilleth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of all the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. So the Bible says he reigns over the heathen. I was a heathen. So were you. Can you say amen? amen? We weren't born a Christian. You had to make a choice. Just because you went to church when you were young didn't make you a Christian. You still have to make a choice. Are you going to believe and ask Christ into your life or not? It doesn't matter. You know, you grew up in a Christian home. You still have to make a choice whether you're going to serve God or not, whether you're going to believe in Jesus or not. It was your choice because God reigns over all the heathen. The Bible says he's put eternity into the hearts of every person in the entire world. Can you imagine that? Eternity in the heart of who? Eternity in the heart of Gideon, whatever his name is. I mean, thank you. Those people had eternity in their hearts, but they didn't use it. They didn't believe it. They wanted to be evil. Amen? A dictator just died. Who was he? Fidel Castro. He had eternity in his heart. 
He could have served Christ. It was his choice. Amen? Amen. So supreme authority and almighty power are God's and his alone. Amen? Amen? He wills to rule, not by mere power, but by wisdom, righteousness, and love, which is his own eternal love of his being and working. It's his working power in people's lives. It's his eternal love. His love is everlasting. It never fails. How many times has God's love failed you? Never. Never, right? Because it's an it everlasting faith. Love. Like he doesn't love you, but he always does. Yeah. Praise the Lord. When men rebel against his will, and rebel against his love, and rebel against his truth, God will still accomplish his purpose yes, he will. in their lives. Amen. It doesn't matter. Because he's got supreme power over our lives. Our inability to explain how this is possible does not affect that fact. We're always trying to figure God out. Well, I tell you, I'm going to give you a secret. You will never, ever figure God out. Because you are not more intelligent than God. Amen? Amen? Anybody here more wiser than God? Ask an atheist that question, he'll say, I am. Amen? Ask an unbeliever, and they'll give you all kinds of phony excuses. Because they think they're more intelligent than God. The ways of a man are foolishness unto the Lord. Amen. Just think of that statement. When men rebel against his will, he still comes as purpose. <coughs> Where otherwise, God cannot govern the world. Conscience and scripture alike tell us the freedom and responsibility will not be interfered with. God will not interfere himself with your freedom to make a choice. You have to decide who you're going to worship. It is your responsibility as a human being and a child of God to decide who you're going to worship. You're either going to worship Christ or you're going to worship yourself. That's only two things. Amen? Oh, it's the devil. No, it's yourself. Because the devil makes you worship yourself. You ever notice that? Amen. How many of you ever remember Fawns? Yeah. Remember the Fawns from Happy Days? Oh, yeah. Go to the mirror and go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's man. Oh, my hair is perfect. I'm perfect. And he worships himself in the mirror, you know? So the question is, which kingdom do you belong to? Come on. Who are you giving praise and thanksgiving to? Wow. That which is against his will, which is nearly merely your own intellect, or the Son of God? Who are we worshiping? Come on. Amen. Do we worship God? With all of our heart, mind, and soul, and all that is in us. Come on. Amen? That's Come a good on. answer, Jeremy. We try to. And that's all God wants us to do. That's right. Is to try to focus on Him all the time. Amen? And keep Him first in our lives. Why? Because He is holy and righteous. Amen. And you're not. Seek Him first. Amen. Amen. Who's more holy than us? God. He's holy. He's righteous. He asks us to be holy. He says, be ye holy even as I am holy. Amen. But we can't be perfect. Come on. Anybody here perfect? No. I want to ask you how you did that. Amen. <laughs> Your pastor's not perfect. Aww. And neither are you. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. I am going to make mistakes. I'm going to say things that will make you mad. But i got to speak the truth. Amen? I can stand up here and lie to you. I can stand up here and say all kinds of false things to you. I can stand up here and tickle your ears. Because I know the scripture. I know how to do that. But that ain't worshiping God. That isn't giving God glory. That's not thanking the Lord for His word. That's worshiping myself. 
Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because I am not holy or righteous. I'm only righteous in Him. And He makes me holy. Hallelujah. So we got to believe He is holy and righteous in His dealing with us. He gives us forgiveness, doesn't He? When we mess up and we say, Lord, forgive me, He forgives you, doesn't He? Amen? And He helps you to go on in life. So Psalms 32, 5 says, I acknowledge. What do we acknowledge? How do we gain His forgiveness? We have to acknowledge our sin. We have to know that we sin before the Lord to be forgiven. We can't just say we're forgiven. We have to acknowledge our sin, go before God, say, God, I've sinned against you. And ask for forgiveness. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquities have I not hid. So when you don't acknowledge your sin before God, you're trying to hide your sin from God. And you can't hide your sin from God at all. I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgives the iniquity of my sin. That's the only way to be forgiven, to ask for forgiveness, is to acknowledge your iniquity before the Lord and ask Him to forgive you of your sin. Not just think in your mind you're forgiven, because you're not, until you confess it. And then you talk to the Lord, you confess it before God, and He forgives you. That's what the Scripture says. You can't twist the Scripture any other way. There's only one way to say it. There's only one way to believe in it. Amen. Why? Because you're not your judge. God is our judge. Psalm 75, 7 says, But God is the judge. He puts down one, and He sits up another. Amen? Blessed be the name of the Lord. God is our judge. I'm not your judge. And you're not your judge either. God is your judge. That's why we have to go before Him. And praise Him and thank Him. Well, I'm going before God and confessing my sin and I have to praise Him for it and thank Him for it. Yeah. Thank you for your cleansing power, God. Thank you for your righteousness, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for helping me understand who you are and who I am and how I need to come before you and how I desperately need you in my life. Thank you, Lord. And that's what prayer is all about. That's what confession is all about. Is acknowledging who you are before God and asking God to help you. Remember, none of us are righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness comes not through ourselves, but through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's why we need to go before God. Because He is our judge. Psalm 76, 9 says, and When God arose to judgment to save all the meek on the earth. That's why He judges us. Because He wants to save us from ourselves. Oh, how we need to be saved from ourselves. From our own intellect. From our own knowledge. Too much knowledge kills the spirit. Did you know that? Too much knowledge kills the spirit because then you become right and God becomes wrong. Amen. And you twist the word so you can be right. And it kills the spirit. The letter kills, the spirit gives life. That's what happened to the Pharisees. That was their problem. They didn't know how to worship God properly. You can't worship God when you're in that state of mind. Not properly. Hallelujah. I felt that would hit somebody. The humble. This is what meek means. Meek means the humble or oppressed people of the land. Wow. The poor Jews were utterly helpless in this scripture. And they were calling upon the Lord. God, you came to save all the meek of the world. You've helped us time and time again. You took us through the desert. You gave us a shield in the day and fire by night. You made our moccasins not run out in 40 years. They stayed the same. Our clothes stayed the same. You helped us. You fed us manna. 
And all these things that you took us through the, the waters and you covered the water, Pharaoh and his army with the waters and all these things God did for them, yet they forgot their God. Well, they didn't learn how to praise and worship God properly and thank Him for the little things. Come on. Amen? Psalms 96, 13 says, Before the Lord, for He comes. Why does He come? He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with wrath and condemnation. No, with righteousness. And the people with his truth. Yes, yes. That's how he judges you. With his righteousness and with the truth. Oh, the Bible says the truth shall set you free, and free indeed you shall be. Okay, that's great. So the truth is preached. And you sit underneath the truth and you go, now I'm free. Well, no, you're not. You have to apply the truth to your life. Right. And then you have to live in that truth. Come on. And then you're free. You have to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer, to Come be on. free. Amen? Amen. And when you begin to do the truth, God begins to set you free. And he begins to give you understanding in the Holy Ghost. That's from the wisdom. Amen. Amen. Not the Amen. wisdom of this world. Amen. And the knowledge of this world. Sure. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalms 97 7 says, Confounded by all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves, listen to this one, that boast themselves as idols. Well, many people that go to church boast themselves. As an idol, they serve and worship themselves. How do they do that, Pastor? By ignoring the Word of God and implementing their own truth over the Word of God and believing that more than they believe in the Word. Amen. So they begin to believe their own understanding of what the Gospel says instead of just believing what the Word says. Amen. It is what it is. You can't decipher this Bible to make it your own truth because your own truth doesn't matter. What matters is the truth of the gospel. Amen. That's what matters. The truth of Jesus Christ matters. Not our own truth. Come on. And what we think truth is, read the Bible. Study the word of God. Don't just read it, but study it. What does this mean, God? And then study what that is to find out what it means. Come on. And then apply the truth to your life and walk in it. Amen? I know we're not going to always be successful in that. Amen? Amen. If you work in a restaurant and you make hamburgers all the time, you're not going to make the hamburger the same way all the time. You are going to fail. But that's why we have repentance. That's why we have God. I'm sorry. When the Word talks to you, as soon as the Word talks to you, you need to go before God and say, God, you've spoken to me this morning. I've been reading this, and blah, blah, blah. And this is what it said to me, Lord, and this is what's happening, and I need you to help me. I'm sorry. You can have our own personal repentance before God. You don't have to wait to come to church to repent. Spend some time with God and get right with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling yes. before the Lord. Yeah. Amen. I like this one. And I say this a lot to people who don't believe in God. So you don't believe in God. It says the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. The heavens declare His righteousness, and all the people see His glory. So if you don't believe in God, just look up. Look at that mountain covered with snow and the sun coming by. What a beautiful picture. The heavens declare the glory of the Lord. And the heavens declare His righteousness, and all the people shall see His glory. Amen? Amen. Heaven and earth was created by God. It wasn't created by a bang. And out of chaos, everything was in order. <laughs> Try that in your room next time you clean it. <laughs> Amen? It's not going to happen. Try that in your fridge next time you want to clean it out. Just shut the fridge door and go, <laughs> and open it. It's going to be in order. <laughs> it ain't going to happen. That's how silly that is. Or we came from Parmelo's soup out of the ocean. And these fish walked out of the ocean and became man. 
Amen? Amen. We're prehistoric monkeys. Yeah. And we lost our ability to climb trees all the time. Our ability to eat bananas 10 a day. And we have 10 a year now. And now we're, you know, we're males and females walking the earth. De-evolving. De-evolving. <laughs> You know, how, what nonsense, you know? It takes more faith to believe in that nonsense than to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Psalms 99, 3-5 says, Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. Yes, it is. That's why we praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. The king's strength and also the king's strength also loves judgment, and thou dost establish iniquity. Thou excellent judgment and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt ye the Lord our God. And worship at his footstool, for he is holy. What is this talking about? This is talking about your personal prayer life. But getting before God and just worshiping God. Because he's holy. Get before God and you how many here don't have problems? So we all have problems. You want, to hold, you want to know a little secret I found out about dealing with my problems? I pray and I worship God. I just thank Him for things. I don't ask Him for anything. I just thank Him for things. This morning I was sitting there and I was asking, thanking God for you guys, for you folks. I named every one of you and every person that's not here. And I just thank God for you. Thank you for bringing them into the church. I told my wife, I said, isn't that wonderful how God's blessed our lives? I said, we have met so many great people through our lives, pastoring churches and going from place to place. And God's allowed us to have fellowship with you guys and with other people in other places we've pastored, and that's our blessing. We feel so blessed. So I was thanking God this morning for Thank you, Lord, for this person. Thank you, Lord, for Ron. Thank you for Marilyn. Thank you for Reggie. Thank you for Don and the family. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you Amen. And I'm just so grateful. I'm naming every one of you before the Lord. Thank you. I felt really good after I did that. Amen. And that's what this is talking about. Worship at his footstool. Worship him at his foot. Make a prayer life. Get before God and start worshiping God. For he's holy. Amen. Amen. And he's worthy. Yet we can never fully comprehend or even understand the completeness of God's judgments or His dealings with us. To study infinity. Because to study infinity requires eternity. Mm -hmm. Amen? We can never fully comprehend all that God's going to do. So what we simply have to do is be satisfied to say to yourself, I'll just live right before God. Worship Him. Give Him thanks. And then when He calls me home, then I can ask Him my questions. Then I can ask Him the things I didn't understand on the earth. Amen? Amen. I'll just worship Him while I'm on earth. I'll thank Him for what He's put in my life. And I'll give Him praise for those things. And I'll just try to live as best as I can for Him. And I'll make a prayer life. Lord, a prayer of thanksgiving before God. You should try it. Don't even ask God for nothing. Just go before Him and worship Him and thank Him for what you have. Amen. Grateful heart. And lastly, we need to worship and thank our God because He is loving and caring to all, to all of us. God is especially concerned for the weak and the helpless. Well, the poor. And for his own people. You can always depend on God's love for you. But you can never, well I can say never, but you can't always depend on your love for each other. Amen? Amen? Because I might say something in here that will just tick you right off. And then you hate me for months. You'll still come to church. You'll still smile and shake my hand when you're looking for every fault. You're looking for everything I say that's going to make sure that you're right. Amen? 
You don't have to be right. God has to be right. Amen? And that's the way it is with everybody else. Somebody says something, you come to church for a while, they take you off. They don't know it. Just you and God know it. And the devil. Oh, did I say that? Oh, it's the devil's joy to keep you away from church. It is. He loves it. Because he doesn't want you to hear the word of God. He doesn't want you to grow. He doesn't want you to change. He wants you back. And if he can get you back, he's happy. Amen? So resist the devil and flee from him. Be happy. Serve God. Psalms 33, 18, 19, and 22. I put them all together. It says, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear Him. Upon them that hope in His mercy. Are you hoping in God's mercy? You Amen. fear the Lord. Amen. Amen. To deliver their soul from death. And to keep them alive in famine. Let the mercy, O oh Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. You know, God's always got his watchful eye upon you, upon those that fear his name. He's always looking over you. Because he wants to preserve his people. He's there for you. He wants to take you home. One day he's coming for you. One day we're going to be at the Lord. So he's preserving you. That's why he judges you. That's why he convicts you. That's why he calls you to change. Yes. Amen? Yes. He's preserving your soul. And he won't allow you to suffer and to famish in righteousness. God's always there. If your heart is famished in righteousness, get a hold of the Word of God and start reading it. He'll make you alive again. Amen? This is the most important book you could ever read. I have it on my computer. I have it on my phone. Amen? Amen. Just pick up your phone and read it. Yeah. Not Facebook. Not Twitter. <laughs> Amen? But the Bible. There's all of three. There's my sword. There's all kinds of download things. There's a Bible study you can download into your phone. You can put it in your computer. And you can start reading the scriptures every single day. Amen? Amen. That's putting righteousness in your soul. That's putting the things of God which are right in your soul. That's what righteousness means. The things of God that are right. Because we don't have any righteousness on our own. Amen. Jehovah Jireh is our great provider, is he not? And when our hope is faint, he will bless us above more than we can even ask for or even think of. How many have ever been faint and weak hearted in the Lord? I have. Amen. And then you go before the Lord and you pray, you get a hold of God. And he begins to strengthen you. And you feel his strength. Yes. And he nourishes you. Because he is watching over you. He's preserving you. Hallelujah. 100, Psalms 100, verse 5. For the Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my truth will never pass away. It will always be there. This truth is everlasting. You know when you go to Sunday school, you went to Sunday school you're a little boy or girl. Amen? Because mommy and daddy made you. Amen? That was our reasons. We went because mommy and daddy made us until we figured it out, right? You know, <laughs> you know, you can go and then when you get older, go away from the Lord. But his word will always remain with you. I was talking to people at work the other day, and one of the ladies said a scripture. And I know she's not saved. I said, went to Sunday school, eh? She goes, how'd you know? I said, because God's word will never leave nor forsake you. 
and it's in your heart and you've spoken. It never leaves you. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, now you do. You know? Psalms 113.7 says he receives, or he raises up the poor out of the dust, lifts the needy out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princesses of his people. Do you know that Joseph, just as a shepherd's boy, belonged to a lot of brothers, got thrown into a pit, one of the brothers had mercy on him, got picked up by a, a group of gypsies, they figured, oh, we can make some money with this boy, so they sold him to Pharaoh, brought him to Pharaoh's kingdom, was risen up by God, was falsely accused by his wife, was thrown into jail. Look at all the things he had to go through. Did he mock or did he complain or did he uh, curse God? No. He became the best in jail. Best in the circumstances. He became the best when the baker, the butler came in. And he prophesied over them. And then one of them got to go before Pharaoh and Pharaoh had a dream. Boy, I wish I had somebody that could, these guys I got, they're worthless. They're, they don't know nothing. I wish I knew somebody that could interpret this dream. So they brought Joseph. Oh, I remember Joe, he did this for us. And he, go get him. So he brings him up. He turns up the dream and he comes second commander in the whole nation. God can take a poor person and raise him up to be the prince amongst the people of the princess. Amen. Amen. How about Daniel? Time of Cyrus, thrown in the lion's den. Why? Because he won't bow. give in and bow down to a false god. Come on. He knew he was going to be seen praying three times a day because his windows open. He prayed in front of everybody. But he got thrown into the lion's den. And the guy goes and he goes, Are you okay, Daniel? Has your God been able to save you? That's your God. It wasn't his God. And there he is lying on the lion's belly having a little nap. It's because God saved him and Daniel becomes second in line in the nation. Mordecai. Mordecai goes into Esther and says, Hey Esther, this day maybe God has set it up for you to save your people. Mordecai becomes second in line because Mordecai did something and he was not rewarded with it. And the person that was trying to kill the Jews, Haman, took Mordecai, put him on a horse, celebrated him through the land. This is the man that saved our king. Worship him, worship him. And Haman hung on the old same gallows that Mordecai was supposed to hang on. Took a poor man Three poor men and made him princes as among princes. Because this is what God does. Psalm 145, 14 says, The Lord upholdeth all that fall, raises up all that those that be bowed down. If you will get before God and believe and trust God in your life, that's what He'll do for you. Amen. Amen. He'll raise you up as princes and princesses before your family, before your relatives, before your friends. Amen? And he'll help you. So I want to close with this. Worship God with thanksgiving and praise. For he's the ruler of all the earth. He's holy and righteous in his judgments. He's loving and caring over his people. He always has his watchful eye on you. He always provides for you. And he wants to give you an abundant life in him. Amen? All that I might have life, and that life more abundantly. That's why he came, to give you life, and that life more abundantly.